زندہباد زندہباد ہے جمیت زندہباد امت مدہوش کو تو نے کیا بیدار ہے تجھ سے وابستہ امید ملت نادار ہے تو پتا ہے سر فروشہ لشکر آرار ہے تو پتا ہے سر فروشہ لشکر آرار ہے برسر پیکار ہے تو کافلہ سالار ہے زندہ باد زندہ باد ہے جمیت زندہ باد زندہ باد زندہ باد ہے جمیت زندہ باد زندہ باد زندہ باد ہے جمیت زندہ باد مسلمان کے امبان سے مخاطب فرمائیں گے ڈاکٹر تاہر محمود صاحب محمد و نسلی علی رسول کریم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم صدر محترم رسپیکٹیبل گیسٹس رسپیکٹیبل ممبرس آف دی آرینس آئی ہیو بین آسٹ ٹو سپیک ٹو یو on constitution of India and the Muslims. I do not know political jargon and I am not a public orator. I can speak to you only in the legal language. I am a simple believing and practicing Muslim who has spent his life in the study of law and particularly the law of Islam. And that's, that's all that I can claim as my credentials to be here to be speaking to you. From the caption of the paper which I have been asked to write, that is caption that is the Muslims and the Constitution of India, what I understand is that I have to explain to you where the Muslims of this country as a community stand under the Constitution of India, what rights they derive, what rights they enjoy under the Constitution of India and how they can exercise those rights what is their overall legal position under the Constitution of India. I have before me the overall caption of this symposium that is Islam for Peace, Progress and Salvation and I have before me the caption of this particular session which is, has been titled as Milli Session and it is within the precincts, within the limitations of these uh, titles of your general symposium and of the present session that I am going to speak to you of the position of the Muslims under the Constitution of India. There is a brief written paper which with the permission of the chairman I present to you. The basic theme of the Indian Constitution in the light of which the legal status and the rights of the Muslims of this country may be determined is what is called secularism. In 1947, at the advent of independence, after centuries of foreign domination, we adopted the ideal of secularism and infused it into the provisions of the National Charter which we enacted, adopted and gave to ourselves on 26 January 1950. Notably, however, the newly adopted constitution did not then formally declare India to be a secular country. A formal declaration to this effect was made not less than 27 years later by the means of an amendment in the preamble to the constitution effected by the Constitution 42nd Amendment Act of 1976. What was, we should think, what was the idea behind allowing this long time of over a quarter of a century preceding the formal inclusion of the idea of secularism in the preamble to the Constitution? To this question, my answer is, the reason was nothing else but the fact that the world outside the country was to be gradually familiarized with our peculiar concept of secularism which we had adopted in 1950 and which we had to evolve and establish through the practice of the constitution in the years to come. This concept was very different from the idea of secularism which the United States had developed and also from that which the Soviet Union had given to the world. Under this Indian concept of secularism, there was no Soviet type of irreligion or allergy to spiritualism. There was no US type iron wall of separation between religion and the state. 
by virtue of our national concept of secularism we were to become neither anti religion nor profane to spiritual values our constitutional notion of secularism revolved around the ancient indian tradition of sarva dharma sambhav and around the quranic exhortation lakum deenukum wa liya deen it meant an unqualified equality of all religions in the eyes of the state in india and in the eyes of the law and denial of any privileged position for any particular religion in the affairs of the state and in the governance of the country no disrespect to any religion no abhorrence for any spiritual tradition complete freedom of conscience equal opportunities of development for all faiths and beliefs and no discrimination against any individual or group on the ground of religion these are the explanatory clauses without which one cannot understand the epithet of secularism as used in the constitution of india by virtue of this distinctly indian national and constitutional ideal of islam mr chairman ladies and gentlemen islam as a really by virtue of this distinctly indian national and constitutional ideal of secularism islam as a religion must enjoy in this country the same socio legal status as hinduism and the muslim millat the same socio legal status as the majority community it is in the light of this basic constitutional position that we have to examine where the muslims stand individually and collectively under the constitutional setup of the sovereign democratic socialist and secular republic of india as far as individual muslims are concerned all the fundamental rights under part 3 of the constitution are their rights as much as of any other indian citizen among these constitutionally guaranteed fundamental rights are the rights to equality before the law and equal protection of laws equality of opportunity in the matters of public employment freedom of speech expression assembly association movement residence profession and occupation protection of life and personal property and of course freedom of conscience none of these basic rights can be denied by any organ of the state to any muslim by reason of his being a muslim moreover under the freedom of conscience clause of the constitution every individual muslim is entitled to the right to freely profess practice and propagate his religion in this aspect in this respect no discrimination can be made by the state between the muslims and its other citizens all are equally free legally and constitutionally to profess their religion to practice the tenets of their religion and to impart the virtues of their religion to their fellow citizens for the enforcement of the right to religious freedom and of every other fundamental right like all other citizens the muslims have a fundamental right to approach the judiciary the supreme court and the high courts by appropriate proceedings as far as the indian muslim community as a whole is concerned the millat e islamia hindia has the constitutionally established the status of a distinct religious denomination under article 26 of the constitution of a distinguished section of citizens under article 26 and 29 and of a sizable religious community under article 30 of the constitution on the whole the muslim community in the country is a collective member of the brotherhood of indian religious communities noticed and recognized by the constitution within the generality of the vast indian nationhood as a community the muslims of india collectively enjoy under the constitution many valuable fundamental rights including the rights to establish and maintain institutions for religious and charitable purposes to manage their own affairs in matters of religion to own acquire and administer movable and immovable property to conserve their languages and scripts to preserve their distinct cultural traditions to establish and administer educational institutions of their choice and to impart religious instruction to their children like the rights of individuals these collective rights of the communities too are made by the constitution fully justifiable fully enforceable by the courts i have briefly narrated to you ladies and gentlemen the constitutional guarantee constitutionally guaranteed rights which the muslims of india have which they share with other indians individually and as a group all these fundamental rights of the muslims 
as individual and as a community, as enshrined in the Constitution of India, do furnish a very healthy and democratic picture of their ideal legal and constitutional status in this country. This vast gamut of constitutional rights and guarantees were accorded to the Muslims on a par with other fellow citizens by the framers of the Constitution working under the guidance and the inspiration of the father of the nation and those other noble souls among whom there were many Muslims whose struggles had heralded in this country the era of independence, democracy and national progress. All this is written in the National Charter well and good. The question is whether these rights are being really enjoyed by the Muslims. To that the answer is very difficult to give an answer to that. If I can give an answer in the language of an Urdu poet, I am reminded of a share of Allama Anwar Mirzapuri or some other poet. Log samjhe the ye in pelab aate hi nazme pohna chaman ka badal jayega. Log samjhe the ye in pelab aate hi nazme pohna chaman ka badal jayega. Ye khabar kis ko thi aatashe gul se hi tin ka tin ka nashe man ka jal jayega. As regards violation of the constitutional rights of the Muslims, individual and collective, which unfortunately is by no means exceptional in this country and which is increasing day by day, it is the sacred national duty of every Indian citizen to have recourse to all constitutional, legal and social strategies for a total stoppage and prevention from their recurrence. This is a fundamental right. I mean to strive for the stoppage of the violation of the rights of the Muslims. This, I say, is a fundamental right which every Muslim of India must assert and a sacred constitutional obligation which every other non-Muslim citizen of this country must agree to discharge willingly and diligently. Balanced with the constitutional rights and privileges of the citizens of India, there are now enshrined in the constitution the fundamental duties of the citizens. These constitutional duties are shared by the Muslims equally with the rest of the Indian citizenry. There is nothing among these duties that may be regarded as derogatory of the Islamic religion. On the contrary, many of these are greatly encouraged by the teachings and tenets of their noble faith. All citizens of India, for example, have a duty to promote harmony and spirit of common brotherhood among all the people transcending religious, linguistic, regional and sectarian sectional diversities. And who else than the Muslims can lay the strongest claim to the right and the obligation to discharge this duty with the real religious fervor? Does not their Quran declare that the entire humanity is an ummat e wahida divided into communities and nationalities merely for the sake of mutual recognition? And did not their Prophet ﷺ repeatedly declare that all human beings were children of Adam and Adam was made of earth? It was at the time of Qubba Hajjatul Wada that um, the Paghambar ﷺ had said, Ya ma'ashar al-ins, kullukum abna'u Adam wa Adam min turab. Support and guidance may be derived from the Islamic teachings and Islamic history also for the discharge of many other fundamental duties of the citizens under the Constitution of India, including those to develop a scientific temper, humanism and spirit of inquiry, to safeguard public property and abjure violence, to conserve the country's composite cultural heritage, and to uh, strive towards excellence in all spheres of individual and collective life. Which of these duties is not a duty of the individuals and groups also under the Islamic code of life? Actually, many of these concepts were given to the world by Islam. India has borrowed it from the basic Islamic teachings and enshrined them into the constitution of India. Let the Muslims of India, as individuals and as a community, faithfully discharge all their fundamental duties under the constitution and fruitfully enjoy all their fundamental rights as enshrined in the constitution of the country. Today, the Muslims of India are not united. They suffer from sectarian differences amongst themselves and many among them further suffer from a misdirected veneration for things 
which as per true Islamic doctrines are simply non-existent. They have corrupted their religion and culture and otherwise deviated from the true societal values of Islam. Consequently, a vast majority of their non-Muslim fellow citizens are either blissfully ignorant or have grave misunderstandings about the true teachings of Islam, which in their unadulterated form undoubtedly must have a universal appeal. The foremost precondition for the Muslims of India in order to collectively enjoy all their constitutional rights and to discharge all their constitutional duties individually and collectively is that they must shun their internal differences and become a respectable community united on the lines of the true teachings of Islam. It is the primary duty of all conscientious Muslims on the soil of secular India to promote unity among themselves, to preserve their religion and culture in all its purity and to effectively and sincerely work towards the goal of familiarizing their non-Muslim brethren in nationality with the true Islamic code of conduct. The lead in this respect has to come from the Muslim youth who, I am confident, have the ability and the strength to demonstrate by their speech and conduct that Islam can be a valuable asset for this country in its march towards progress at the national and international level. The Constitution of India does not stop its Muslim citizens from fulfilling this sacred obligation to their noble faith. On the contrary, this distinguished co-parsoner in the Indian joint family of religious communities, namely the Muslims, is assured all help and encouragement in this regard by the constitution which equally belongs to and is surely meant for the well-being of every member of this vast commonwealth of communities that we call India. Let the Muslim youth of India rise to the occasion. The Indian nation, as also the international Muslim millet, is eagerly looking towards them for the discharge of this sacred obligation on their part. I will end my speech with uh, the prayer in the words of the late Malana al and Hali, Ay khasa ay khasa ne rusul, waqt dua hai, ummat pe teri aake ajab waqt pada hai, jo deen badi shan se nikla tha vatan se, pardes mein wo aaj gharib ul ghuraba hai, taddeer nahi koi samhalne ki humare, haan ek dua teri ke makbool hai khuda hai. Hindustan, zindabad, Millet Islamia, Tayan Dabar.